We're right here, man. You got beer. That's more important than headphones. Hold on a minute. All right. Welcome to the party. All right. Guys, it's me, Cody Jinks. We are uh, we are a couple in. I'm a couple in. I don't I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I know Josh is a couple in. Wait, I don't know this is, yet. This is, I'm about to be. Okay. About to All be right. a couple in. Um, to my right, as cheers. usual. Cheers. 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 To my right, as usual, uh, Bobby Keith Kilgore. Yes, sir. Hello. And making a special... Cheers. Hey, what's up, buddy? Making a special guest appearance tonight behind him, Hot Rod. He has no mic, but he'll interject if need be. To his right, Josh Thompson. Hey. And our very special, special guest. <laughs> special... In first so time many ways. In so, so many, many ways. ways. First time, and actually, we'll talk about... We'll dive into this. Actually, my first time to, to be around and meet and just hang out and get to drink beer with Wade Bowen. Yeah, man. About time, right? It's it's. We were talking about that last night. Last night we we got to sit on the bus after the show we played last night in uh, where were we? Beaumont. 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 The killer show in Beaumont. <laughs> we're currently in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but we got to sit on the bus and visit for a little while for the first time ever. And we were talking about how crazy um, it's been. You know, I've I've been in in this I guess scene whatever you want to call it for fifteen years, and you were there. You know, a good five, six years before I arrived, and uh, we've never crossed paths. Yeah, I've been doing it 21 years, I think, so, what, so I figured out what I can remember. And, uh, yeah, I, I, it's crazy. And, I, you know, because we had these shows coming up, I was at Steamboat uh, this last week, and I was telling everybody that. I was like, I can't believe we're playing shows with Cody, and I've never even met the guy. Like, it's crazy, so. I'm a nice guy. I get around, you know. Like, you, no, you I'm are. Legal. You have. Well, and that's I, don't just, I don't just hang out on my bus, you know. I mean, jo- I get around. <laughs> Josh and I were we were talking today about this because we've had a good time doing this, and this will this will be our third official podcast. We haven't released any of them yet, but this is the third one officially. And uh, uh, by the time you release them, they'll be this. They'll be there. We don't know that. We, we don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't know when it's going. I don't know. We're, we're looking for sponsors and, and shit, man. Right now, you know. But uh, I, don't, I don't know when they're coming out. They're, they'll come out eventually. They've been too much fun not to. But uh, no, after all the years and all the the mutual friends and acquaintances we have, and I've I've never heard one bad thing about you or your organization or working with you guys. You guys have oh, probably the the best reputation. I would say so. You know uh, that you can that you could possibly have, and uh, yeah, that's, that's I love hearing that. I mean, I, and I'm pretty, I'm not a hard ass in it any way, but I'm very hard ass on that with my guys and my camp. And like, man, hey, anything you do is fine, but just be nice. It starts know? at the top and be easy to work with. We cut, you know, we say low maintenance. So you know, that's the first thing I say when I go out with anybody new or walk into a venue that's brand new. Is like, hey, look, we don't need anything special. We're not, you know, we want. Want to be as low maintenance as possible. Do our job and go 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 on the bus and hang out. You know, like that's that's. I don't think there's any other way to do it. Well, there's there's not because when, to to maintain the longevity as a touring band, you know, and and my guys, it, every it's the same thing. I don't even need to elaborate. It's right. just and like, we found that out last night too. Yeah. Everybody we were talking about it at lunch today. Yeah, you know, because it's not always the case. But you and your band and crew and everybody were really great to us last night and. It was a rough day for us, you know, to say the least. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about that. Y'all had a hell of a day. Yesterday. So y'all treated us very kindly. I mean, considering all that, we, it could have been a disaster. So we, uh, yeah, we were very, very complimentary today at lunch. No, so it's Thanks. it's great, man. So it's finally great to meet you guys. But let's let's just let's just bullshit a little bit because literally the first time I met you yesterday face to face, you y'all had hauled ass. You tell it. Y'all were in. So, yeah, we played a Steamboat Music Fest or whatever they call it. Music Fest at Steamboat Springs or whatever the official name of it is. I don't <laughs> Texas know. Week, as they call Texas it. Texas Week, there, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Texas Week. <laughs> and we played there all week. I actually had gotten up there with my family on the first and skied and stuff. So I'd been up there for a while. Played our festival, played the festival there. And uh, most most people play once or twice. I think I played like six or seven. I just love it. I'll tell John Dixon to throw me on as many shows as possible. And um, so we we always close out the the week with a, a steamboat finale where we 
play our show and then do a bunch of songs at the end where we get a bunch of artists up with us. And then, uh, and then we literally jumped off stage and within 30 minutes we were in a shuttle and drove four hours to, to the Denver airport to catch a 7 a.m. flight. On the most dangerous road, probably. <clears throat> yeah. With, or one of them. Yeah, he stopped twice to put on chains and all that. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm just... <laughs> Just somebody give me a give me a beer, please. He's like, just back there going, we're just trying to make the freaking Cody Jinx show. <laughs> yeah. Damn, we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> it was worth it, man. I, I disagree. It was really fun, man. It was so worth it. How and was the driver? You know, the driver had been driving that mountain for thirty nine years. I was about to That's say That's the first thing he said. Cause I was like, cause it was coming down mm-hmm. and they had closed the pass earlier in the night while we were on stage, because it had gotten so much snow. And then they opened it back up. And I was like, that was the first thing he said to bring us comfort. I've been driving these roads, these mountains for 39 years. You guys, let's get in. Let's go. I'm like, okay. Lee. I'll never forget Lee. Scared for my life, man. You know, but. Lee, Lee, Lee sounds like an important man on that mountain. Yeah. <laughs> he was to us, man. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, by the time we hopped in the shuttle to when we got here, it was probably, I don't know, 15 hours or something like that of travel time. And, and then, uh. An early show for us, you know. We we're a bar band, man. We used to start at yeah. ten or eleven at night, so yeah, seven p.m. is early for us. Yeah, that's yeah. nap time. Isn't it? Was- yeah, exactly. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, like- and y'all y'all got here and y'all y'all were here with bells on and and uh, made it and and rocked out and it, it sounded great. Thanks, man. I missed one song and it was the song I was going to record for my kids. Sunshine's on a dreamer because oh, that's, yeah. that's like their favorite song of yours. <laughs> and there's the one song I went. I was telling Josh, like, oh, I went to take a piss. And I came back and caught the end of it. I was like, that's the one song I was going to try to, you know, because every, every show, you know, whoever we play with, I try to get some video and I send it home to the wife and kids because they oh, know cool. all the people that we play with and stuff like that. So I know when it's at and you're set tonight, so I won't mess yeah, it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we'll stick pretty close to that last last night, I think. It was pretty – I really enjoyed your crowd, man. And, you know, we with these shows, you know how it is, man, when you go out with somebody different and new and you're not real sure if anybody's going to – gonna get you and man everybody was really cool to us last night what well, it, it was a lot of y'all's crowd too there was you know there was it was it was good there you cool had a lot us. of people standing up singing along with yep. you and yeah. i was i was watching so that was no that's always great to see and and, and that, that venue was uh it's a little bigger than we're used to playing that was a big venue last it night. was big man we it was huge played the ford 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 arena arena in mm-hmm. beaumont last night and they beautiful were lovely place though right oh, beautiful yeah, it was great beautiful. yeah people walked great. in and it's like how the hell are we gonna Enough people in here to at least make it look good. <laughs> you know? It did more than that. It looked but, great. No, it, it was fun. It was, oh, it was a lot of fun. All right. So I've got I always I just try to do my due diligence and, and I I do get notes and and, and talking points and uh a Man, poor, is it bad this beer's going down so good? No, before? sir, it's no, not bad. This is this is my fifth or sixth one. So <laughs> right. I'm, a, I'm a six pack in. Let's <laughs> change the name of the show for six this one. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so I write down talking points such as uh, you know songs of yours that I like that I've liked in the past. Um, I love West Texas Rain. I love the meaning of that. Thank you. Um, and we can dive into some songs. Yeah, but man. like I was saying, "Sunshine's on a Dreamer." My kids uh, love that song. Every time that song comes on, it's like crank it up, like roll the windows down. It's it's just a beautiful song. Talk a little bit about that one. That actually. Um so that was a song that I had tucked away in my little cubby hole uh, for years because I'm good friends with Jed Hughes. I'm not for sure if you're familiar with Jed Hughes. Mm-hmm. Jed Hughes is a amazing singer, songwriter, guitar player. He was born and raised in Australia, and he was going to school out in, uh, when I was in Lubbock. He was going to school at South Plains Music School. We got to know each other out there, and he signed a deal with MCA Records out of out of college, and kind of had. I don't know the brass ring, and it just didn't pan out because he's 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 unbelievably talented, and we've written songs together over the years, um, and and that that one was actually one that he wrote by himself, and I had it kind of tucked away, yeah, waiting for the right record yeah. to put it on, yeah, and uh, when I got so I, I was on uh, Colum or B and A, then it was Columbia Records, and I tried to put it on that one, which was the major, the only major label album I had. I tried to put it on that one and they didn't like it, like didn't want to do it. And uh, 
I just it just blows my not mind. Like that song. Yeah, it just it just was. That like, just what? makes me shake my head. Well, yeah, it's I mean, music. It's music really people, right? When you hear it, yeah. Song. When you hear it, you're like, man, that makes you feel good. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and so when I got <clears throat> out of that whole situation with the label, I I made a re- I made this self titled record. Um, with had West Texas Rain and all those on there. Um, and I was like, that's it needs to go in here so I can prove them wrong. And it's it's definitely done that. I mean, it's it's been a huge song for my career and people love it all ages love it yeah so it's 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 a blessing it is it's beautiful it's a beautiful song um a battle one great song. a battle one that's oh, just that's just song. what we do right that's just honest right yeah and i love it's a great example of songs that i i love writing i think i'm best at writing conversational songs like to me, those are is what country music really is. It's it's conversation, simple conversation back and forth, and um, I love writing those songs where you're not necessarily having to be truly poetic. You can just come out and say it. And um, I wrote that with Adam Hood and Jason Signs, and uh, yeah, just see, I grew up with three sisters and no and no brothers, so I had no help. At all, mm, that's right. <laughs> and uh, being around women my whole life, you know, you kind of learn certain things. And uh, that song is a prime example of me learning to not ever argue with a woman. It's a lot easier if you just shut your mouth and go about your business <laughs> <laughs> and say, "Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry." Well, and, and you learn that with your mom, but you've also you've been married for how long? I've been married 14 years. Okay, because because we have a, a very similar. Uh, Everything there's a lot of parallels, a lot of, a lot in, of parallels. In, in our camps. Uh, long time, you know, wives of we, mom and I have been together for fifteen. You have two kids. I have two kids. I think yours are a little older than mine. Yeah, mine are fourteen and eleven. We've got uh, yours. You said ten, 10 and, and seven, seven last night. Ten now. and seven. Uh, long time bass player. With yeah, you. that's right. That's um, right. You know, you have a Bobby Keith. I have a Bobby Keith. You know, there's just hey, uh, Casey. Yeah, Casey. Yeah, Casey. And and it's uh, we won't leave you out there hanging. Sorry, Casey. <laughs> we get you but, there. Yeah, get you up. know, just a lot of parallels. Um, is is it with your kids? Obviously, uh, they don't know any different. No, I, I, I say that a lot. Like you know, uh, and me, it, it, there's a lot of things they they don't know any different. But uh, for me, I was really shy. Still am for the most part. But I was really shy about music. Um, I played a lot of sports growing up, so I was really shy about music. I, you know, wasn't real sure if, how I was going to do this, but I knew I wanted to do this somehow. Uh, but I always kept it to myself. You know, I was really reserved about it. And uh, man, my kids—they just jump up on stage and sing and play and kick ass. And it's like they don't even think about the crowd. They don't think about people out there in, in the audience you know they just get out there and do it and I guess it's part of that they're just used to seeing it used to being around it they've been doing it they've been jumping up on stage with me I think Bruce was like six and Brock was three with well, the first time they jumped up on stage with us at the Reckless Kelly softball jam and it was just downhill from there they've just taken over and run run the roost man it's pretty cool we we were just able to get my daughter out for the first time uh, last month she's 10 she's never wanted anything to do with it but we have a, a song that we're we're doing as one of our last songs, and it's kind of a like just a jam session. Everybody gets together. My son has no problem with it. My son wants to he want he wants to be on the stage, the like even stuff, if yeah. he's just not doing anything. Just while we're playing, <laughs> he would just stand there like this is awesome. Yeah, you know he he's um he's he's my seven year old, but uh, yeah he's very comfortable with it. My daughter not so much. She loves to sing, which is really cool. And you know we're we're just we're the type of parents. It's like hey you know if you want to. You do whatever you want to do, you know, but if you want to be on stage, you know, it's, you know, dad's been gone your entire life, you know, the, the, like they don't know any different. No, they don't. And yeah, you, just as far as the personal side too. Yeah, you're right. They don't, uh, the home life, everybody's always like, it's gotta be hard on you or hard on your kids. It's like, well, they don't know any different. Yeah. Like they don't, Yeah. they don't know that someone's, you know, and I think about my buddies too, that are, you know, they work normal jobs and they, they wake up in the morning, see them for maybe 30 minutes before they're out to school or off to work, and they come home at night, and they don't the really hour, get any. I mean, it's quality baby. time for them is just as hard as us, you know. So I think if you're smart about it as a musician, as a touring artist, you can actually get more quality time 
with your kids than most people. Hundred percent, it's just a different schedule, yeah. Yeah. you know. And and they, and you know, they as they get older, they start to notice that what's normal with their friends is not what we do. Yeah, but it hasn't affected us at all. I mean, I, but I make it a clear point as a dad. You know, I say it to them all the time. I say, hey, you know, uh, we get to have this because I'm gone all the time. I'm sorry, but we, but, you know, this is why. I do it. Uh, we're at Disneyland saying, hey, man, I know I'm gone all the time, but, you know, we get to do things like this because yeah. I'm gone. So, yeah. No, I have the same conversations with my kids, and I always have. And uh, there, there's a lot of the we get to do this because of this, you know, or, or no matter what it is, you know, if it's if it's meeting somebody and we get tickets to go see the monster trucks, you know, at, yeah. oh, at, hell you yeah. know, at, at Cowboy Stadium or something like that, you know, like. It's we get to do stuff like that because of this, and they, you know, they don't know any different. And we homeschool our we, my wife, <laughs> my, we homeschool our kids now, <clears throat> so I get to spend that much more time with them as well. Because whenever you know, if I'm off the road, um, you know, I normally sleep a little later, you know, than if they get, get up to go to school. But so after they're done with their homeschool, it's like we get to go do whatever you know and and, it's cool and now they're old enough to where we can just go do whatever and have fun and my son's starting to come out on the road with me now every now and if we're going two or three days you know we're starting to do that too so that's that's a lot of fun he's a lot of fun when i you know uh i had so now now it's two years ago 2018 i'll say whatever year and a half ago i i had vocal issues and i had to um cancel three months of shows and when i came back uh, one of the highlights of my entire career was um, I. So I worked out something with my doctor because he didn't want me coming back, and I was like, "Well, I'm broke. Like I have to get back out on the road. Uh, the voice is not there yet, but I'll. What if I? What if I make it <clears throat> work? And I was like, "What if I get with my band? We jam a lot. Come up with a show where we play play a lot more than we normally do. I'll sing 45 minutes of a 90 minute show, and I'll bring out some guests." And uh, he said, if you put together a show and put together the set and show me that you're going to protect it, then I'll approve it and you can go out. And so part of my process was getting my son to sing some songs with me. Nice. And it was it was incredible. Like, so it's pretty cool. Like, it's like almost makes you want to cry. Like, you know, my son's saving my career, yeah. you know, I mean, helping out the family business or, mm-hmm. or however you want to look at it. But it was amazing every night because he, he went on the road. He went on the bus. It was during the summer. So it worked out great. And he went out with us and just stepped up, man, and sang and entertained. And the crowd, you know, well, they love that a lot more than my dumb ass singing, you know. Like, uh, That's, well, it's like, unique, man. They, yeah. It's not something that you see very often. And he's a great singer, too. So it's like double exciting, too, because they'll see, well, he'll start and then they'll be like, oh, cool, he's singing. And then he'll <clears throat> sing and they'll double yell, you know, whatever that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing, man. And, you know, his he's the kid that, like, you can name any Beatles song and he can tell you uh, what album that was on and what year and all that. I mean, he's just a student of music. Student, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so awesome. That's pretty fun. Well, no, like you were saying, I mean, I was at your benefit in <clears throat> 2018, I think when you had your surgery and he came out and sang most, most of the set, right? Yeah. Of, of your song. Well, he, he started it off. I couldn't, that, I had, so that benefit was on Sunday, a Sunday is when we do it. Mm-hmm. And I'd had surgery on Thursday before. Yeah. And I've, the doctor was like, you can't go. And I was like, well, I, I have to, you know, so, so we, uh, I couldn't speak. I wasn't allowed to even whisper or anything. Yeah. So. Let, let, no, and not that you haven't talked about that 85 million times, but you know, it's kind of a, 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 it's a point for somebody that does what we do for a living. So it depends on their voice. And I watched, um, cause I knew about it when it happened. I mean, cause everybody hears, you know, like that's a big thing in our community. Yeah. Um, Knew about that when it happened. I knew uh, Hot Rod. You you went. You were there too, right? At the uh, at the at the benefit, right? Did you go the, to that one? No, we had seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Was that the seventeen? Okay. Anyway, I think um, that was the first year you did it at at Baylor, right? Yeah. The uh, eighteen yeah, was the, the first. Okay. Yeah. So we went to the. I watched. Um, I watched that. It's about. There's about a twenty minute video mm-hmm. that you guys put out. About basically 2018, just basically having your ass handed to you, yeah, and in a lot of different ways, and and there was some stuff in that that I didn't know about. 
some stuff that I did know about was, was the vocal issues. Your vocal cord is actually hemorrhaged and we're bleeding. Yeah. There is a surgeon that, uh, has, that's all he does is vocal <clears throat> surgery, vocal cord surgery. That's all he does in his life. And he had never seen it. No kidding. So you're sitting there going, am I going to be okay? And he's like, Yes, just not sure how yet. But there was, you know, I mean, I, I and I'll, I'll admit it. I went home, you know, leaving the doctor's office, calling my wife, crying on the way home. You know, like, what the hell am I going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, what if this doesn't work out? Start thinking all of these awful things. And uh, man, it, it was it was a challenge uh, for sure. But you know, um, the documentary that we did, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I'm I'm not one for pity, and I'm not one to to be. Uh, even like, look, I just want to keep this on the down low and take care of it and go back to work. You know, I don't want to make a big deal of this, but my management and team and everybody said, you know, I think it's really important that you talk about it and show people number number one, that you're back, but number two, that it's going to help so many other people when they see that, see that you went through the struggle and you got through it and uh, you came out better on the other end. Well, because you had just dropped a record. Yeah. And then couldn't go support the record. Yeah. The record came out the end of February of that year. And my voice went out on me the end of the end of March. Yeah. So you, you really didn't, you had no time to. No. Oh, and it, 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 you know, it really, it really hurt the record. I really believed in that record. It was a record I did with my buddy Keith Gaddis and who's a badass. And I was so excited for that record to come out. And, uh, you know, still to this day, I still don't think it got or did what it should have done. You know, but that's, that's okay. Well, and it's part of it, part of the journey. Yeah. No. And, and, and watching that, watching that, it was a 20 minute video, but yeah, you just so had your ass handed to you in that year, but you've come back, you're strong, you're out and you know, you sounding great and all that. But there was another part of that video about Chase Cavender mm-hmm. uh, dealing with like the mental health side of mm-hmm. uh, things. And yeah. And certainly this business and the, the people that are a part of this business are usually creative type of people and can seem like they're up here and they're really down down there. And Yeah, for sure. You know, I appreciated that y'all, y'all dumped some heavy shit into that documentary. <laughs> we did, man. And that was part of that whole thing. Like, I think it's important for people to hear that. Um, well, you know, I think it's good for artists to hear that their voice can be healed. But mainly, I'm glad that documentary – Covered all of that with my nephew. Uh, Chase was my nephew and my road guy. Um, he did, ran the stage and did uh, uh, guitar stuff and all that, you know, took care of us. And he was really, I mean, I'm, I'm not just being biased. He was really good at his job and, and a damn good dude. And uh, just, you know, one night, I, I don't really, you know, we'll never know what happened. But one night he just clicked and it didn't, didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. So it was, it was yeah. tough and, uh, you know, we'll never know why and never get over it. But the only thing we, only thing I knew to do was once I took a, a step away from it, the only thing I knew to do was to just look, I'm, I'm going to talk about it because it's, this is ridiculous that it's happening so much. Suicide is happening so much in our society nowadays. So if this helps somebody, yeah, at least one person yeah. from not doing it, then, uh, and it has, man, I've, I've gotten so much feedback um direct messages on social media and emails and everything from so many people saying saying that they almost did and they didn't they yeah. didn't because of what we went through and everything so i mean at least we did our job there no it'll I, never it'll just, never fix the chase situation you know but uh and not not to harp on anything i just you know it it's it's uh i i've i found it um it, it's obviously sad but like Thank you for talking about it. You know, like that was that was re- yeah, man. heavy. But another thing that really struck me watching that documentary that made me like you before I even knew I liked you even more was that whenever y'all were dealing with that heavy situation and your vocal situation and weren't able to tour, you were still paying your band and crew. Yeah, and, I was. <laughs> and... 
people that don't do, I mean, people that run businesses for a living understand that if you're not going to work, you're not making money to sustain yourself, much less the people that depend on you. So using basically company money, you know, to, to float everybody like that's fucking badass, dude. You know, Thanks, that's man. like, that's like tip of the hat. You know, that's big shit. Um, thinking of the people that, that, that work for you and, and heaven forbid, you know, anything like that happened to anybody. But anyway, just super yeah. commendable, man. It, it well, made thanks. me, it made you know, me appreciate I, I it's it. It's important to do that. I mean, you know, these guys, um, that are out with us. I mean, I've always treated everybody as family and, you know, <laughs> sorry, this sound check is that our, it's probably us. our guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking awesome. of them right now, they're, yeah. they're the ones back there making noise. <laughs> hey, assholes. <laughs> I'm going to stop paying you. Stop it. <laughs> you did <the> vents. <laughs> No, but, you know, they're, they're family to me and always have been, and, and that's just the way it should go, you know, like the way it should be. Um, I, I love them dearly, man, and I also wanted to keep them around, so whatever it took. We, and we, we, we almost didn't have to file for bankruptcy, but we were close. Yeah. Well, I just, as somebody oh, that, that values, thank you, buddy, as somebody that values uh, a, a band and crew, like like I do, like you do, you know, guys that have been with you for years and years and uh, get to know each other's families and, and all that kind of stuff. It's important. It's a it's important thing in this business. So anyway, yeah. I wanted to touch on that. Thank you, man. You know, bless it. you yeah. for that. I thought that was awesome. All right. <clears throat> this is this was kind of funny. Um not you playing the Grand Ole Opry, which that's super cool. Um your introduction to the Grand Ole Opry, the the gentleman that introduced you. I, it was, uh, it was really, it was funny to me. I don't know why it was funny, but it's like, it was, he, he looked like a professor up there and he was talking and he's like, I'm gonna have to go and watch this. Cause you know, I'm, now I'm sounding like an idiot. But <laughs> I'm like, staring at you. Like I've never seen this video. Well, so no, it's, it's, it's on, you, you it's on YouTube. It. Cause I watched the video on it on YouTube, but it was like, it didn't go with Wade. <laughs> was it? I can't like I don't know I can't remember. I've never seen I, I'm not, I don't know either I'm now I'm intrigued <laughs> because you're not thinking about the intro whenever you're playing it no, you're just sitting no. there going don't fuck up don't fuck up yeah. don't fuck up you know you know which video was it the one from the Ryman or the uh, the Grand Ole Opry uh, I think it was from the I think it was from the Grand Ole Opry yeah, yeah. anyway all right, we might have to edit this segment no no <laughs> but, I'm, I'm intrigued I want to go see it now <laughs> because <laughs> because yeah, your, your introduction just I don't know if it was just me being stoned while <laughs> What do you say? Like, I'm going to say 45 percent. Yes, <laughs> say more. I just that. I remember watching it because like, and maybe it was extra funny to me because I knew what you were probably feeling and going through right. before it. Because I remember how nervous I was. Yeah. But yeah, play it. I, I, all right, they got to sell something real quick. Hang on. All right, hey, get those sponsors <laughs> in here. There was something. There was something about the in, your introduction that just made me giggle. And I just might have been really drunk. Yeah, high. it's funny. You, you said you said it right though. I don't remember because I was so nervous. Like. The first time I did it, you know, you, I didn't bring my band. Yeah, I didn't. Because I was just happy to be there. And they said, no, we'll just play with you. And I was like, oh, right. okay. Here, here, here. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. It's, Is that it? It's, yeah. It's, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it sounds. This young man will be a new voice, a new name, probably. A uh, new face to you. Uh, yeah, the voice. He's the voice. But if you know anything about Texas music, this young man has been making quite a name for himself down there in the Lone Star State <laughs> Lone Star for the better part of this decade. He's a very talented singer. And for those who know about Texas music, you can have a tremendous career down there with your work with show dates and opportunities and, and uh, of course, Radio airplay and the Texas show charts. Dates and opportunities. And the like a backhanded comment. What the fuck is he talking about? Is he reading the Lone Star? What he's trying to do is he's... Keep going. Let's the rest of that. 50 dates a year. He's trying to make me... Scale back a little bit. Sound better than I really am. That's the hard thing. Yeah, sure. He's got three Grammy Awards. 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 That any artist will ever have in their career. It's one that he you know, will remind you how great no, of an opportunity this is. I mean, I'm well, standing like right, right off to the side here. So I remember Ladies him talking, but I wasn't. Warm Grand Ole Opry welcome on a Tuesday night to Mr. Wade Bowen. 
<laughs> Wade Bowman and the Strugglers. Wade Bowman <laughs> and the Strugglers. With his uh, with show dates and opportunities. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah, that's what we do. That's it. Anyway, that's, I guess you know, I was, it's not as funny as it was when I was really high and, and up <laughs> watching watching fucking videos on Wade at 3 o'clock hey, in the it's, morning. It's hell trying to make me sound good, man. It really is. I feel sorry for that guy. That was a tough task. <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot to dig up, man. Oh, my gosh. That was funny. It's still funny, but it was funnier that night. Josh, you've actually got a story, don't you? Your wife? Oh, what did Brandon I mean, to Wade? Well, since you went ahead and, and teased it, <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. No, but it was during your uh, your vocal recovery, and and we we were having um to uh, a double header at Whitewater, and so my cousin and some friends went down and rented a house, and they invited Katie and I to go down there, and and so the first night that we played, they didn't even come to our show; they went to Cheatham Street. And apparently you were there just watching the show. My wife had had just enough libations that she had recognized you and she knew that you were having vocal recovery. And I guess people were coming up and talking to you. So she went over there and she was your uh, kind of bodyguard <laughs> that night at che- Cheetah Street. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Who was I? Who, do you, she was, who were we watching? I, I don't remember. I have no idea. Um. I'm trying to remember that. What about I have no idea, but I assume that's kind of a, a place you enjoy just going and yeah, and, and watching shows. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I love sitting in the back and. Do you like I, to do that in your off time going? I really don't. Shows? I used to a lot. I don't anymore now. I just go home and I'm like a lazy ass dad now. <laughs> I mean, you know? I am like, too. I I used to. I just yeah. like to me going home now and I'm thinking about going to a bar. Just really does not excite me like it used to, you know. I mean, I love watching music, but I just, I, you know, I, which I'd was, rather sit at home with my kids. You which know? is why I was surprised that Katie said she she saw you that night because I was like, wow, I, I figured we'd be, be at home, home being like, yeah, hey, I've got a night off. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay well, home. Yeah, and it's funny during that time that it was like three months that I had off. We had to cancel shows and stuff, and I don't remember much. It's weird. I don't remember much at all during that. Of that three months. In fact, this is how messed up my head was. Um, Jamie Lynn Wilson is one of my favorite human beings in the world. She's, she's an incredible. incredible singer songwriter. Awesome. My wife and, is a huge fan. Yeah, on to her. She's amazing and one of my best friends. <clears throat> and we'd played Mile Zero Fest together that year, which was in February February first. Mm-hmm. You know, right right before the record and everything came out. And she told me that night that she was pregnant. With her, with another kid. And I was like, I, oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Great. And then all that stuff happened. And I saw her like, well, that would have been five months later, four months later during that time off. And I said, hey, let's go meet up. I, I'm, I haven't seen anybody in two months. Um, about to have vocal surgery. Let's, can we, can we just go hang out? Go, go to green or something, you know, shows up and she's got a big ass belly. Hmm. And I was like, I didn't. What the hell? What the, you're not gonna tell me? She's like, hey, I told you, dumbass. I told you a long time ago. You're the first one I told. I'm like, God, where the hell have I been? I just like, it just shows you how much I just dropped off the planet for a while. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Well, well, you, I mean, you had a lot going on up there. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like, you know, there's a lot of like, what a shitty friend. I'm sorry. Hey, congratulations again. You know, <laughs> uh, you, you had a lot going on there. Yeah. I'm sure she uh, she understood. She did. I'm sure, but you could tell. You know, as a woman. Six months pregnant or whatever, five months pregnant. She was still kind of pissed. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just women. <laughs> that's any woman five or six months pregnant, yeah, just, man. You know, you can't do like, much right. You no, know? I, do, I do know. Uh, Twenty fifteen, we almost met. Way at Ziegfest, right? Yeah, at Ziegfest, well, yeah, in we, Houston. We talked we about both that. Did. We were both having double dip days, mm-hmm. and uh, I think y'all. We played from three to four. Y'all were four to five, and we like we went to Decatur. I don't know where y'all went. And, we yeah. both played two different shows. We had, yeah, we we had to. It was one of those that that you guys were there, and of of the bands that were there, y'all at the, still at that time, y'all were the only guys we hadn't met. We both just had to play and get the hell out of Dodge, and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Go go make that money. Go drive. Yeah. Go drive five more hours and God, set no up kidding. And, and play another two hour show. <laughs> right. Hey, Cody, so I, I uh, just got a message on our fan text line. Yeah, 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 yeah. From 
at Randy Dodger. Okay. And he said you have a uh, have have a question for for Wade. Oh. At Randy Dodger. <laughs> at Randy right? Dodger. Yeah. Is at this Randy from Twitter? Dodger. Yeah. From Twitter. Well, no, it's it's our fan text line. Oh, okay. That, yeah. That hasn't been started yet, but okay. Okay. But it, it it'll 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 be there at some <laughs> point in time. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. Randy Dodger wants to know. Um, <laughs> wants everybody to know about the time. Uh, you got into his bunk and beat him until his nose bled. <laughs> Randy Dodger. Oh, okay, I got you now. I need some more beers to catch up, man. Uh, yeah, I whooped Randy Rogers' ass one night. Yeah. yeah. Well, he made it sound like he was just defenseless, just lying, lying. He was helplessly. <laughs> he was. But what here's, did he do to deserve? here's the real story. Okay. First of all, I am not a fighter. It's actually the only fight I've ever been in, in my life. No shit. <laughs> the only fight I've ever been in, in my life. You won. Was with Randy was Rogers. Was with Randy Rogers. While he was asleep. It's hard to explain that night. It's one of those, like, it needs to stay on the bus of why. Mm-hmm. But uh, as much as he may talk and sound like trying to be a badass, he deserved every <laughs> freaking punch I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo, his manager, the next day came up to me and was like, "Hey, I heard about." It. I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm sorry." He goes, "No, no, 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 good job, good job." Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a really, so, but it was a tough time for Randy. He had had a yeah. rough year, whatever. Okay, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. So, Randy, so, you had it coming. Just evidently. to stick up for myself, okay. He was getting in and out of his bunk sixty five times at least. His wife was up in the front. We were cruising down the road. And he was just being a total and complete idiot. And we're, we're hammered, obviously. I mean, it's four in the morning. And uh, we're on the Hold My Beer tour together. And uh, I went back to talk to him and was just getting so pissed, so pissed. And he rips the curtain, you know, in my face. So I just started punching through it, you know. <laughs> pissed me off, man. So so you were in your bunk. He no, wasn't I, was, in- I was standing in the bunk way. Okay. In the hallway. <laughs> Looking at the bunk. All right. And he closes the curtain on you. Yeah. And there's a lot more to it. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Sure. But he I'm pissed sure. me off enough yeah. to get in the only <laughs> fight of my entire life. And I just beat. I just. So started, you didn't intentionally hit him in the nose because the no, curtain was, he was closed. Just, I was just, you just You were just swinging. going. And this is just one of your you best friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They drummer, make, like, my drummer cringe, pulled me yeah. off of him like, what the hell is going <laughs> on here? Style? You guys are friends. I was like, hey, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, the next day was we actually. Um, Played Dallas the next day, and it was the best show we've ever played, even to this day. It was the best show we ever played the next night because we kind of got it off our chest and went and played a girl. And that's actually the show that you that we released a live from mm-hmm. Dallas show, and that's the show the day the, the day after I hit us. <laughs> no so kidding, live, yeah, live the, <laughs> that's live awesome. The majestic. That's live a good, story. Uh, or, House of Blues. No, House of Blues. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, we we've got to know Randy a little bit. Uh, over the past few years, we've we've done some shows with him, and Randy was Randy was like a tough egg to crack for me. I didn't because Randy has that look to where like you don't know if he doesn't like you or right. if he thinks something's really funny. It's kind of the same look, right? You know, and you kind of depends to, on how much to drink he's had. And all that, yeah. <laughs> Randy drinks, no shit. <laughs> yeah, and gambles, no way, <laughs> no way. That's all we've ever done together. Anytime we hang out, if we're not at a casino, we'll find a way to gamble and drink. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. Like the first That's... the first show we played with him, we took him for um, – we had a cornhole board set out. I think I was telling you all this last night. We had a cornhole board set out, and, and uh, Josh and I were just throwing bags. We were down at a rodeo arena in uh, Waco, and uh, Randy and, and Brady Black come up, and – they're wanting to put some money on the game, you know, and we're like, no, we'll just let's just throw some bags, man, you know, and like <laughs> no, that, not with them. Let's just grab because uh, you know, like the reputation of like they gamble on everything, you know, or oh, everything, and <clears throat> he gambles on lunch, it, like credit card roulette. Would you do that? Oh, oh that's dinner. dangerous. Mm-hmm. So we we took <clears throat> him, we took him for you know, a uh, hundred or two hundred on cornhole, and then uh, Randy wanted to win his money back. And uh, he had shut the box, which we now carry on our bus and, and have introduced to a whole bunch Tons of different of bands. But 
we go up on Randy's bus. He wants to win his money back and shut the box. Ends up losing like 200 more to Josh, <laughs> our bass player. And Brady looks over at Josh. He's like, you might need to get off the bus now. <laughs> You know, so Josh just took his money and ran. What you you won like three hundred dollars off Randy that day. <laughs> but what's weird is Randy yeah. doesn't mind losing it. I mean, it's really strange he, to me. Like, be, he's a gambler, though. He's a gambler, and he just like he doesn't mind losing it. It's like, man, most most people I know, they're like they get so pissed, mm -hmm. you know. But he's just like it's almost like he's happy to be money, <laughs> happy to help you out. He's, yeah, he's he's paying for his good time. Yeah, he's like, yeah. this is a great a time. time. This is a good time. Yeah, this is I'd, it. I'd rather, take my money. I don't want to actually want to win. Yeah, I just like that we're here doing this. You know, I'd rather lose my money to my friends and well, casino. Though, and I've lost. Sure. I've lost way more money probably in the bus than I have. You always win. In the bus. No, <laughs> do not. No, <laughs> you're so full of it, dude. Yeah. Not he never in one on like in Jeez. one in one day increments. Like I've, I've so hey no straight up though do y'all let him win because he's no. the boss oh, no, 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 no 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 it's no. one of those like man hey no, boss I've, you're the best hey you're the best man that. no no it's definitely like that <laughs> I've won more money on the bus than I've lost in total what I was trying to say was I've lost bigger increments on the bus than I do in a casino. For the most part, yeah, I would say that. Like you had a big hand against. Like uh, I'll lose four, driver. five, six hundred dollars a night sometimes on uh -huh. the bus. <laughs> like I can't do that in a casino. It, it weirds me out. Yeah, you know? like I lose. It's a rough night. Yeah, I lose a few hundred dollars in a casino. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. You know, <laughs> but like I'll sit there and throw high dice with the guys on the bus or play AC Ducey, which yep. is an easy way to start out playing a dollar a hand and have a eight hundred dollar pot. It's the weirdest damn game, man. Then the only, like we I'm don't have the, we one. don't have eight hundred dollars to match it. And like, like you can't even match hey, it. Go give me some money out of the bag. <laughs> and, like, some he merch can money. Match it. Like yeah, yeah he's he's the only one that can ask that money. Don't tell anybody. He's the only one. Yeah, I'm the only one that has like an automatic <laughs> bank on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> bank of Cody's always open. Bank of Cody's always open. That's what that. But no, golly, man. For those those that out there that don't know us, Randy or I. Uh, Randy and I's Randy and I's friendship is great. Like that was funny story that he. By the way, he always brings up that I whooped his ass one night. I'm like, man, why do you, why do we have to always talk about this? Like, you know, don't make you don't make yourself the victim, okay, you little bitch. Like this is you deserved it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So Randy, we'll have to get you on here and tell. Oh, story. I definitely, I definitely want to have have Randy on. Oh my god, yeah. Because I mean, you I'm can not... do one with Randy, and then we should do another one with both of us. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And then, yeah. and then, and then we like, can uh, get some real shit talking going. We'll on. have we'll have point A, <laughs> and then we'll have point B, and then we'll have the truth. Yeah, whenever both <laughs> right of them in the middle. Are, are are okay. <laughs> Golly, no, it's funny, man. We've gotten to know him and uh, gotten to like him. The the last. Was it the the last time? No, not the last time we played with him. Second to last time we played with him, that festival where everybody's chunking beer cans at us. Oh, Chili Fest. Oh, Chili Fest. Golly. Yeah. He done that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. it's nuts, man. I've, I've never been a part of anything it's like crazy. that. It's like, what? When I was in college, I drank beer. Yeah. I didn't throw it. Man. I was no. too cheap. I was too broke. Evidently, they had like pallets of beer that were brought oh, out what? there. Just pallets, to throw. Just to throw. Yeah. Three pallets of natural light. Eight foot high. And it was just uh, a throw. It was a really good lineup that day. Um and uh, I, I can't I can't recall who it was. I just remember the lineup was really good. Anyway. And Whiskey and, Myers, uh, Yeah, us, Whiskey was there. Randy uh, Randy. Yeah, Flatland. Uh, Flatland Cavalry was there. And I think Kyle Park. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, it was, it was it was a bunch of really cool people that we'd mostly all played with before. But uh, we were standing on the side of the stage uh, during Randy's show. And we were just watching the just full beer. Like what they would do is they'd crack a beer, drink a drink, and then just throw it. it. We'll sling it around a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. Everybody around and so get by the time it hit the stage, you had about a half a beer. But then you had a couple times where you hear a thud, and you know that was a full fucking beer. Some of them weren't even open. <laughs> we that we, picked we up. were on stage there one year, and they they uh, I look in the way in the back of the crowd, and there's these guys hoist up on their shoulders a a refrigerator, like a full size fridge, and it starts slowly coming towards the stage, like towards the front. And they get right at the front and they put it down. And you see the security come up and they're like, "You can't have that here. You can't, you can't have a fridge." Move it. And they're like, they go this big argument. And this is all while we're playing our show, you know. And then, and then these kids go, "All right," and they take hoist it back. it back up and have to take it right back out. <laughs> 
That well, we tried, guys. That was a good <laughs> idea not to have to leave your front row seat. So what's the weirdest thing thrown up on the stage at you? Well, that actually, that same festival, that same uh, Chili thing, College Station, they, they threw this bag of something. I don't know. It was like a bag of... It was like a wine bag, but it was plastic bag with a spout on it, you know, but it wasn't wine. wine. Yeah. You know, oh, like and, a slap the bag yeah, drinking game? Yeah. yeah. And they slapped the bag and they were like, slap the bag, slap. And I was like, like, I'm not drinking out of that. <laughs> oh. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> 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 Anything to make a crowd yell, right? So, right. I don't know, man, but. No, Chili Fest, um, somebody threw a football at me and it hit, hit the, the mic, mic stand. stand. And then the, the, the video, they had it filmed. The video, it looks like it actually hit me in the face, but I moved right in time. It would have fucking knocked my teeth out. Yeah. I mean, full-size football into the mic stand. Just, just, I was like, whoa, I saw it coming, you know. But um, when Randy was getting off stage, he just he was walking off stage, and I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, don't tell them to stop, man. They'll throw more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because the night before, a oh, can went right by Pat Green's face. And yeah. He goes, "You miss me, bitch." Yeah. And then he got hit. I think he got hit in the face and the shoulder. Yeah, it's like just something. ignore it and let Jesus. it go. There were at least there were seventy beer cans, maybe eighty beer cans by the time we got done. You remember the story of like long time ago with Cross Canadian Ragweed when they played a calf fry in Stillwater, and they used to have that tradition of throwing cups. In that, whenever they were like they were using like push brooms. To, to shovel off, this, yeah, yeah, because they were get he would get everybody to throw cups because he got tired of like trying to fight it. So he's like, just throw them, you know. And, yeah. it, and it kind of became a tradition. The one dude threw a full handle, uh, a empty handle of Jack Daniels, no. and hit it. You remember that story? No, and hit him in the face. Hit Cody in the face. Yeah, knocked him out. Show was over. Bleeding everywhere. Had to go to the ER. We no played the next kidding. night. Miranda Lambert and I played the next night, and I loved it because I, I I go visit with Miranda. I'm like. Uh, did you hear about last night? She's like, yeah. I was like, uh, it's going to be fun, I guess. I hope they don't throw any bottles. She goes, I dare them to throw a fucking bottle at me. I dare them. Like, okay, well, don't don't ask them, okay? <laughs> don't They'll really do it. Them. I'm telling you. Don't, no, don't dare them. Don't, don't <laughs> dare them, Miranda. You're playing, you're playing the it. festival this year. We're playing Chili Fest again? Yeah. No, no, no. It was uh, Calf Fry. The Calf Fry? Yeah. It's, but this is a long time ago. It's oh, fine okay, now. Okay. This was... Okay, 12, please don't throw. You don't, don't want to don't bring back the I bottle s- throw. No, I sing with my eyes closed the majority of the time. <laughs> not there. <laughs> I'm like, You'll be like this. This is not good. Why did I had the whole day. That was the first time Cody's seen the whole show. I did. That's the first time I ever saw the whole show because I was like, I ain't fucking closing my eyes. Like I'm looking. I'm like. I think Brady. Brady got hit. Brady got hit in the, Brady Brady hit hit in the balls, balls yeah. uh, with a, in the middle of a solo. In the middle of a, he, yeah. I mean, he went down to a knee, <laughs> like fiddle and, fiddle solo beer can in the in the crotch. Oh. And turns around and like looks at us because we're standing on the side of the stage. He's got his bow in one hand, his fill in the other. He's looking down at his, <laughs> his <laughs> looks like he's pissed all over himself <laughs> and just mouths. You can just see, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> turns around and sticks his fiddle and bow up in the air. Is like, all right, and okay. goes back to it. And <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, it pure was, pure pro. It was amazing. Oh man! All right, this has been fun. Anything you want to touch on? Any, y'all have any more questions? I do have one. Do, get it, man. Papa Rolo's pizza. That's your favorite. Oh, oh man. Okay, I wanted to confirm I love it. that. Is that it was Waco? it. Yeah, that that was Waco, it. Uh, Papa Rolo's. It's Papa Rolo's is good, man. Best. But it's funny. I take out of towners there, and they're like, "Yeah, it's okay." I'm like, "I guess it's just a home Waco stable thing, for me." Yeah, but I guess. there in Georgia's is where I grew up going. My dad, my dad went to Georgia's. My dad grew up in Waco. Went to Baylor. And still lives there, never left. He never lived anywhere else. So he was going to Georgia's when it, you know, way before Pat Green made a song about it. Yeah. Uh, and and well, so that's where I've been going since I was a kid. Well, another thing people might not know is Cody, Cody Canada, brother in law. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying like people listening. Oh, they might not. I, I'm, they may not know. Yeah. Yeah. So Cody always says, I married his sister, and that's not true. He and I married sisters. We cleared that up this, this week at the tribute. Like, Stop telling people that. Because it sounds weird if I say I married your sister. <laughs> <laughs> even if even if it wouldn't be weird, it just sounds weird. I married your sister. I married your sister. <laughs> like you know, it's, it's just like you can tell right. something. Yeah, it doesn't like it sounds if, really really bad. Like and it's not bad at all. No. It just sounds bad because it's your sister. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. the way you say it. <laughs> I'm glad you agree with me because yeah. Cody never agreed with me. I'm like, just tell them we married sisters. It's a lot easier, you know. Married what's sister. uh what's your handicap right now? Terrible. My golf game, uh, I completely quit playing pretty much. Did you really? I'll play, I'll play like 
I play charity events and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know. But I mean, I, I I've got you know a few tournaments lined up through the year, but. But you don't try to play once a week or anything like that. Anymore. I used to, and I have my whole life. I mean, I've had a yeah. golf club in my hand since I was three years old. Um, like I said, my dad played golf at Baylor, and so he he was always uh, that's always our thing. You know, that's the only other time I really play golf now. Though is I kind of quit, and just dropped it. Uh, I don't know why. Got frustrated with the sport, and so now I just play when I'm with my dad. Or, yeah, or you know, bonding. I mean, it can be that way. I <clears throat> picked it up. About three years ago, so oh, so you got I'm the bug, just, probably. Oh, I've got the bug. I mean, yeah. he plays all the time, but yeah. I'm still a career 92. Like that's my best round ever, still. So it's, it's I'm like a, a only one. Don't shoot yourself. Well, okay, oh, nice. Well, yeah, I I, I did <laughs> get lucky. Too cheap to go buy the video because they recorded it. <laughs> do, do not. Re- we'll, we'll talk about hole in one in Arizona, Phoenix, me. Arizona, yeah. and it was 250 for the video, and he's like, "No, nah, I'm good." Oh man, <laughs> I know. I, that's so well money. Money well spent. M- m- money, you still buy money it? Was different. You can't buy it now. Uh, probably still? not. It, Bullshit! It was I know how much ago. money you had two years ago. You had 250 dollars. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I'm, I'm really. It's one of those. I'm really disappointed that I did not buy it. I bet they still got it. I I bet they don't. <laughs> anyway, pretty cool, man. I've only had one my whole life. Well, I, I had my one, and it it was pretty, pretty amazing. Fun, right? Oh yeah, except for the bar tab. Well, what was really really great about it is I. So I go and play by myself when we're out on the road. Nobody else plays with me. So I went out and. Uh, Got paired up with these with this father and son duo, you know, and once we got to the clubhouse, there was actually a wedding, so they'd shut all the bars down. Oh wow! So I didn't have to. So you got out on that one. Yeah, I didn't. You have know, to Pat Green had a hole in one at Pebble Beach when they're doing that celebrity pro am thing. Oh no, kidding! His bar tab was like four thousand dollars. I think I still oh. would have paid it though. Yeah, oh yeah, it's Pebble worth Beach? it. It's worth yeah. it. Get a hole in one. four thousand dollars for a bar tab. Yeah, because if you hit the hole in one, you have to pay for your group's bar tab. Yeah, that's, that's no, the that's goal. incredible. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's good golfing. <laughs> <laughs> I retired. Silly, right? I retired. It should be the other way around. They should be buying. They your should drink. Buy, Yeah, they should be. pay yeah. you for dollars. Yes. Yeah, that's what I would do. That's what that's what they should do. Damn golf. No, I you know I dude I golf for I golf for a year and year. That's uh, about as long as I golf. It was about a year and. I, it was long, long enough to know you don't like it. It's not that I don't like it. I can watch it on TV now. Yeah, you know what's going on. Yeah, and I can enjoy watching. As before, I started playing golf. I couldn't watch it on TV. I couldn't enjoy what was happening because I thought it sucked. I thought it was not that I didn't think it was a great sport. I know it's a great sport. I just, it just wasn't my thing. It's, it's, I tried it, and I tried it. I literally gave it a year and a half, and. um Josh actually bought me a set of clubs for my birthday a few years ago. Tried and out I, the driver in the Nashville Airbnb. We did. I tried to <laughs> drive her out in, inside one day. It wasn't a good idea. But just horrible. I'm the worst golfer ever. He might be. I, it's not. Really? It's awful. It's not you get even, lessons or any of that? Just, I, I have. Oh, yeah. Take a pro lesson. I've taken, I, I've taken several. I've gone with Josh on a couple of different occasions to, to take awful. lessons. But it's, it's a hard sport, man. It's, it really it's incredibly hard. hard. And See. if you have never played it, you can't, you can't knock it till you've tried it. Like it's the most difficult of all the sports that I've ever tried. I'm the worst at golf. Yeah. We know Think of the Charles Barkley swing and then put a little couple extra <laughs> hitches in it. And that's Cody's swing. A couple extra hitches. We know why it's a four letter word. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Damn right. I, yeah. yeah. Do you remember the time we aggravated Jamie Johnson because he was trying to play a real game and we were. Like, yeah, game. we were playing. <laughs> <laughs> that boy loves him some golf. Oh, man. my gosh. He's, he's, <laughs> that's all he wants to do. You, you can't hang out with Jamie unless you want to go play golf. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go play golf, he'll hang out with you. But otherwise, no. And we were we went out with it was us and uh, we were with Ward Davis and Jamie was off the road. We were in Nashville and we went and played golf. A whole bunch of us and Ward <laughs> Ward and I just got hammered. <laughs> just like I, I hit the ball one time and I, my club slipped out. And my club went further than the ball. It was just one of those. <laughs> it was one of those type of days, you know. Jamie's getting like. So mad. Like pissed. Because- well, and Ward and Cody are in the same car, so they're just tearing ass oh, yeah. <laughs> to the oh, golf course. <laughs> we know, got- I think Jamie is by himself in his own car. You know, and, you know, we and, got, and we I'm got, hanging back there. I'm just, oh. You know, we got like 20 beers in the cart. We've got, you know, 80, <laughs> 80 joints rolled, and we're just being jackasses. So we finished that, that day, and uh, the next day Jamie calls us. 
He calls me and he goes, all right, Cody, you want to go play golf today? And I was like, I can't believe he just fucking called me to ask me if I want to go play golf again. <laughs> and I said, sure. I said, uh, I said, let me, let me call Ward. <laughs> so I call Ward and I go, hey, Jamie wants to go play golf again today. You want to go? And he was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives us directions to this place. He takes us to this little, uh, this little nine hole, uh, Walking just, part. It's three. a walking. It's a nine hole walking part three. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> sell beer. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> smart. He's smarter than he looks. Right? So we we get there. Smart man. We get there, and we had already smoked a joint and, and drank some beer by the time we got there. It's about noon, and uh, we get there, and, and we go into the clubhouse, and you know we're getting all checked in and whatnot. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah. Uh, we just need, I don't know, there's five of us here. We need at least, you know, four carts or whatever. And uh, Jamie goes, I ain't got no carts. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, man. <laughs> Wait, we can't drink and we got to well, walk? At this point, I didn't know they didn't have beer. <laughs> so I just found out we didn't have carts. Oh, no. Okay. So I was already pissed. I was like, okay, cool, no carts. That's half the fucking fun. All right. Cool. Um, where, where do we uh, where do we grab beer from? Jamie looks over and goes, "I don't have beer here." <laughs> and I look over at Ward. I go, "I'm beginning to think that Jamie invited us to a place that doesn't serve beer and have carts because he thinks it's funny or something like that." You know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Ward's like, "Yeah, man, the fucking sucks, Jamie. Fuck you, man." <laughs> so after that, my golf days are about over. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, we'll have to You're do another session. Out. I have more questions, but we'll. we'll, we'll I'm in no we'll, hurry, we'll, man. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it another time. Or well, if he's in no hurry, I'm man, it's up to him. I don't, we don't, I don't have like to be anywhere till seven. We can always edit this down. Well, that is true. But yeah, well, I mean, you can save them for later. We can wrap it up, or I mean, you know, it's, you know it's, might it's as well ask one. Might as well do. So one. I want to know. Um, how involved are you in the studio? Do you do you like the minutia of the studio, or do you like to go in, kind of say this is what I want, step out, and you know, you kind of what's your uh, involvement? Um, I've kind of been a little on all over the place on that. I mean, yeah. There's some projects where I've been, he- you know, I mean, most of them I'm like heavily, heavily involved in um, from every aspect of it, and then there's a f- been a few where I'm just like, yeah. Let, you know, let me just let's throw it together and let's. I'll come in and sing. You know? Well, because I go back and I, and I, you know, I listen. I feel like you're one of the when it comes to your from from you know album one to album six. You're one of the most consistent artists um, that 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 I've ever listened to. Period. I'm very um, and, and and I don't. Is, is that a is that a Thing that you are consciously seeking out, or has it happened organically? Like, wh- no, it's conscious. It's it's trying to. I mean, I, I'm really am very. How do I say it? I'm really uh, strict on myself, like make making sure that I am picky, choosing the right person for the right project, making sure the songs are the right songs for that project. So you like to produce. I like to produce. So, I actually so, so. just produced a, a record on another kid for the first time. So I enjoy the process of producing. I, I'm not. Can you say? I don't is? consider myself a producer, though. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't. I just. Yeah, but you say that. But that that's how I got into this. Yeah. The, the producing. I didn't think I was a producer. You know, I, I do the, enjoy the process. I, I And I enjoyed being the producer this with this kid, Mason Lively, I, I enjoyed the process of pushing him to write songs, mm-hmm. um, telling him no, they're not good, and telling him yes, yeah. those are great, and then um, and then again in the studio, um, having everything come alive is, is you know that's my favorite part. I love my favorite part of this whole music industry, everything. Even number two would be I guess people singing your songs back. Number one for me is when you write a song. Um, you know, I write them all on guitar. I don't play piano or anything. So when I write a song on my guitar and then the first time it comes alive in the studio with the band, it's just so cool to me. It's a magical it's a moment. Magical yeah, moment. When you hear it, when you hear it for the first time, you know, even if it's not the right way, which it usually isn't the first take. So 
it's still just really, really a magical experience. So I, I enjoy that process. There's a lot of the studio stuff that I don't, you know, I don't enjoy all the tedious ed- editing and all that stuff. But if you find the right people, they take care of that. And help no, you. absolutely. But yeah, I do. I'm yeah. very, I'm very involved and, and I, well, and, I and, love and, it. And that makes sense on why things sound, sound the way that they do, because you're, that means you're a, that's the constant. Yeah, I'm going know, through it right in, now, in like in my head, trying to find uh, the next producer that I'm going to do. I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going through it right now, trying to in my head, trying to okay, what kind you know? Because at the same time, you know, you want to treat the same way. At the same time, like I want to make a great sounding record, but it's also um, what kind of record do I want to make? I don't want to make. I don't want to make the one that sounds just like the last one, you know. So you're constantly trying to push the envelope a little mm-hmm. bit. Absolutely. Not just do the same thing. <clears throat> and one way or another, it's like sonically, like with the, is Josh produces all our stuff. So that's why he asks those types of questions. But like with these oh. last two records we put out, we, we pulled the reins back and went a whole lot less. There's, there's a few tracks that there's a, a lot of layering and some big pianos and heavy guitars and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's really sparse. Um, and it's just us trying to, retain what our sound is, you know, like you guys have your sound, you know, but not create the same record twice, you know, type of thing. And that's difficult for people that that make records trying to sound like yourself yet. Try to, you know, have something new out there that is different. It's it's hard. It's a struggle to to always stay true to yourself, but also try to make it different. You know, I've been pretty lucky in the studio. Like, coming up with some different projects. Like the whole My Beer project to me is like alter ego. It's like I can do completely different stuff there because it's more country. Um, I get I get that more country um, vibe off of my chest, mm-hmm. you know, um, than I do with my stuff. My stuff is country, but it's not as country um, as I sometimes write. I like to write really, really, really traditional sounding country songs. I just don't always feel, feel like they fit the records. Uh, but the whole My Beer is an opportunity for me to put those songs together and make it, you know, make a country act album. And then I just did a Christmas record that I wanted to do kind of like a jazz sound, you know, like mm-hmm. a fifties style. We open up the yeah. doors, uh, in the studio <clears throat> and Big everything, roomy. yeah, everything bleeding on to everything yes. else, you know, and those, yes. those, those little fun things that you're just, that's nah, cool. It's kind of fun to try something different, you know? And, uh, my wife, I love that. that all through the holidays. That was a good record. Yeah. Well, I always want to make a Christmas record. like after the, the year we had last year or the year before. Nobody like, does those anymore. I mean, I, know. I guess like, people do, but. You don't hear about them as much. You don't hear them very much, but. Uh, they're not as, especially in our group, you know, our scene here down here, it's not not very common. But a lot of people, ever since I released it, a lot of people are like, damn, man, I wish I need to go do one of those too. It's like, yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, I always want to do it. Like, after 2018, I'm like, what the hell? I'm not going to wait around for shit anymore. You know, it could be gone tomorrow. So I go ahead and do it. So I have I have one more and this this is going to be a, a long winded and this is going to kind of be a I'm going to kind of say anyway um you know so I started uh I grew up in West Texas uh in Plainview mm-hmm. um but I went to Oklahoma City after I graduated for college and whatnot and so when I got into my musical like, into this type of genre. It was about 2002. Um, And so I remember growing up, you know, the Wormy Dog in Stillwater, you know, and seeing you guys at the Wormy Dog in Oklahoma City. And I guess my whole point of saying this is, is A, I feel like you're, um, have been around long enough to be considered one of the founding members of, of this movement. Um, and with that being said, how do you feel about the current state of, of Texas country or, or red dirt, whatever you want to call it? Because it's, I feel like it started at a pretty narrow focus and it's gotten, it's opened up to different, different genres or different sounds. But, but how do you feel about the current state of the genre? I feel, I feel pretty confident. Like I feel pretty good about it. I mean, there was a, about Three years ago, I was I was a little worried. I was like, I'm not real sure. And I agree with you. I'm not real sure if, if it's in good hands. You know, yeah. I'm not real sure 
what's going on? You know, it's like all these, just cause you, you know, just cause your mom and dad tell you, you sound good. doesn't mean you should start a band, you know, like, I mean, we had a lot of that at that time. And then, uh, since that, the last two years, especially, I think there's been a really good young group of, um, of, of kids. I hate to sound like the old fucking man. Well, but, but we are. But we're know, getting there. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, like you say, you, you're at 20 I've just years. been doing it a long time. I know. And so, um, you know, I, I think there's a, I think it's in good hands right now. I think it's, I think there's a lot of really, uh, talented kids that are like really care about the craft of songwriting and care about, um, wanting to make that great, which in turn helps them to maybe even if they're not making great records yet, they're, I feel like they're going to, you know, and they're going to figure it out and they're, they're really humble and they're good. They're good uh, kids, they're good people, and they're, um, you know, have they're they they're willing to willing to let the guard down and just uh, listen, you know. And, and it was a long time there when I didn't feel like they were doing that. So yeah. I feel like it's good. I feel like it's gonna, you know, I think I feel like it's in good hands. Good, I really do. Yeah, awesome, David Murphy. If you're out there. Wait, wait, sit a little at 5.30. That's right. David Murphy, I love you. What's up, Murph? Murph, 5.30 in the morning on an airplane. Gives you the, Leave me yeah, alone. what's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> sit down. Go, go over here and go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. This awesome. Was cool. This was fun, man. Yeah, this was great. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Let's hit on hit on some websites and some, some stuff. Um bowenfamilyfoundation.org mm-hmm. and that is yeah our, our foundation we started about six years ago um yeah bowen family foundation we we go into communities it's not our, our biggest event is in waco and that's where we've done the most over the years but uh our, we go into communities and we help any organization involving families or children and we collect the money and every dollar raised within the community stays in the community. It doesn't go to national organizations. And we let people submit grants as to why they need the money. The money and we go through as a board and figure out where it needs to go and disperse it accordingly. That's so beautiful. if we go into Dallas or Dude, if we go awesome. into awesome. Chicago, you know, we make it doesn't matter where we are, we just make sure that the money donated goes back into Chicago. Or, you know, if I raise two thousand here, if I raise two hundred thousand here, I'm not gonna I'm going to give 2000 there only, you know, I'm not going to give, we don't, we don't move it around. Golly, this may be, that's really cool because that's the thing that I worry about the most <clears throat> when I, I'm Being, like, okay, w- w- you know, cause everybody has a charity. Right. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. It almost feels that way. For sure. And, and that feels, you know, I, I really didn't know about. Well, because you always what, wonder what you how the money is appropriate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's, and yeah, so you wonder I, where it's really going. Yeah. You know? I think that's really, really cool. That is, yeah. Awesome. I mean, like, like for the Waco event that we do. By the um, way, if you're off next year, which we, makes we, me we want to be a part yeah, of that sure. even more. In we some would way, love to have y'all. Or, or we do a jam at the end of the night. It's like three and a half hours or something like that, and we just literally just like it's like me and Randy and Cody and Stony and Fowler and like love Jamie, to have you too. And they just come in and two songs. And they come in and do two songs. My band learns everybody's songs and like spends time rehearsing and yeah. making sure they're good, listening to live and everything, you know, and, and they, man, it's pretty fun. The three and a half hours, they, the band just slays it. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, and it's great to have a band that can do that. Oh, it's great. They're such, and they're such, so willing to do it. It's really cool. Nice. But yeah, so, so this year we raised just this year alone, we raised, we've hit the $5 million mark in six years. Un- wow. Unbelievable. That's yeah, awesome, thanks. dude. Last year we that- raised seven fifty. Just alone, and that was our be- our record year. That is crazy. So we were able to, as a board, we went through. I think we had forty, around forty submissions of organizations that needed money, and we went through, and I think we ended up being able to give to like, like twenty, twenty, twenty three. I think wow. different ones, more than half. So wow, it's pretty cool, man. That's awesome. <clears throat> well, hey, man, bless you. For the work that you're doing, that's sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry to go off about it, but no, no, that's, that's important. That's awesome. I love no, it. that's important. I want this is what people need to hear. Like that's good. It's yeah, a fun, I, it's I a love fun doing event it too. It is a fun event. I love doing it. You know, I, I mean, obviously, I don't make a dime off it, and my 
sister runs the foundation for me. She's younger and um, she doesn't make a dime either. You know I mean? It's just, it's truly a labor of love and I love it. No, cool. it's wonderful. That's it's, we should aspire to do such things. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Dude. Um, thank you so much for, for being a part of this, taking your time. I know if, if you're anything like me, when you're out on the road, like I normally want to be left alone and I don't want to do interviews and I don't want to, <laughs> Yeah, but I hope this wasn't an interview. I no, was, man, I'm, I told you from the get go and I'm happy to do it, especially sitting down and talking shop with anybody, man. It's fun. Yeah, so. it is. And and this is, this is the first time I've sat down and, and, and done it with somebody that literally I hadn't met until the day before. So, you know, um, yeah, thanks for putting up with me, man. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, it's been great. We have another show tonight. We're in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, yeah. we, we're going to have more to come. Um, so, uh, Bobby Keith, thank you. Thank Josh, you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, My and, pleasure, uh, man. And, thanks for the invite. Wade, you know, thank you for being here and uh, another successful show. Cody Jinx, and uh, we're a couple in. We'll see you next time.